साईश्वराय विद्महे सत्य देवाय धीमहि तन्न सर्व प्रचोदयात् ओम साईश्वराय विद्महे सत्य देवाय धीमहि तन्न सर्व प्रचोदयात् ओम साईश्वराय विद्महे सत्य देवाय धीमहि तन्न सर्व प्रचोदयात् विघ्नेश्वरा गणनाथ गजानन
भवानी जगत जननी भवानी जगत जननी मंदहासिनी आनंददायिनी
ಗೋವಿಂದನಾರಾಯಣಂ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಗೋವಿಂದನಾರಾಯಣ ಕಸ್ತೂರಿ ತಿಲಕಂ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚರಣ 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 ಭಜೆ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚರಣ 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 ಭಜೆ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚರಣ 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 ಭಜೆ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚರಣ 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 ಭಜೆ ವೈ ದೇಹಿ ರಾಮ ವೈಕುಂಠಧಾಮ ವೈ ದೇಹಿ ರಾಮ ವೈಕುಂಠಧಾಮ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚರಣ 
ಚರಣಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಚರಣಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಚರಣಂ ಭಜೇ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಚರಣಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಚರಣಂ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಚರಣಂ ವೈ ದೇಹಿ ರಾಮಂ ವೈಕುಂಠ ಧಾಮಂ ಸಾಯಿ ರಾಮ ಚರಣ ಭಜೇ ಸಾಯಿ ರಾಮ ಚರಣ ಭಜೇ ಸತ್ಯ ಸಾಯಿ ರಾಮ ಚರಣ ಭಜೇ ಸಾಯಿ ರಾಮ ಚರಣ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಚರಣ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಚರಣ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮ ಚರಣ ಭಜೇ ನಾನಕ ಜಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಕಾರು 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 ಜೋ ಬೋಲೆ ಸೋಹೋ ನಿಹಾರ ಜೋ ಬೋಲೆ ಸೋಹೋ ನಿಹಾರ ಜೋ ಬೋಲೆ ಸೋಹೋ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಮೇರಾ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಮೇರಾ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಯೇಶು ಪಿತಾ ಪ್ರಭು ಸಾಯಿ ರಾಶು ಪಿತಾ ಪ್ರಭು ಸಾಯಿ ರಾಶು ಪಿತಾ ಪ್ರಭು ಸಾಯಿ ರಾಶು ಪಿತಾ ಪ್ರಭು ಸಾಯಿ ಸುರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಮಹಾವೀರ ಬುದ್ಧ ಸುರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಮಹಾವೀರ ಬುದ್ಧ ಸುರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಮಹಾವೀರ ಬುದ್ಧ ಸುರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಮಹಾವೀರ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಲಾಖೋ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಲಾಖೋ ಸಲಾಮ್ 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 ಲಾಖೋ ಸಲಾಮ್ 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 ಮೇರಾ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಮೇರಾ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಗುರು ನಾನಕ ಜಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಕಾಕ ಜಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಕಾ ಜೋ ಬೋಲೆ ಸೋಹೋ ನಿಹಾರೋಲೆ ಸೋಹೋ ನಿಹಾರ ಅಲ್ಲ ಸಾಯಿ ಲೇಲೋ ಸಲಾ ಪ್ರಭು ಸಾಯಿ ರಾಶು ಪಿತಾ ಪ್ರಭು ಸಾಯಿ ಬುದ್ಧ ಸುರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಮಹಾವೀರ ಬುದ್ಧ ಸುರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಮಹಾವೀರ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಲಾಖೋ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಸಲಾಮ್ ಲಾಖೋ ಸಲಾಮ್ 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 ಮೇರಾ ಸಲಾಮ್ 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 ಮೇರ 
सलाम सलाम मेरा सलाम 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 मेरा सलाम गुरु नानक जी की जय जयगा गोविंद साई कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद साई कृष्ण गोविंद 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 साई कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद गोपाल साई कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद गोपाल साई कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद गोपाल साई कृष्ण गोविंद 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 साई कृष्ण गोविंद 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 साई कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद मोहन बाल कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद बाल कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद मोहन बाल कृष्ण कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद पति निवास कृष्ण गोविंद 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 साई कृष्ण गोविंद 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 साई कृष्ण गो गोपाल साई कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद गोपाल साई कृष्ण गोविंद 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 साई कृष्ण गोविंद 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 साई कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद मोहन बाल कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद पति निवास कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद पति निवास कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद पति निवास कृष्ण गोविंद 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 साई कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद
शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय
ससने पिपरे राम दिस होल मास्टर प्लान ऑफ मेकिंग अस डू द ड्रामा ऑफ त्यागे नए के अमृतत्व मानसू वेर ही मेड दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट प्ले द रोल ऑफ भरत इन द मंथ ऑफ अप्रिल he makes this instrument understand that you are just an instrument and your duty is to simply allow the divinity to flow through you and then he gives the ring and says salu bhagwan used to interact with students during the period somewhere between 1996 and 2001 very often in the ganesh portico swami would just come after his interviews stand there and speak at length with students and during one of those sessions swami looked at some boys and asked are you ready to give a speech and the boys who were absolutely unprepared said swami no no we are not at all ready you know we are not prepared to give speech as swami uh we had no idea that swami is going to ask so they were all very scared and uh, they said swami we we are not prepared and swami of course has a lesson in in every moment of our life so even in that moment swami wanted to con- convey a very profound message those days 15 minutes before the bhajans would start there would be a sitar or a flute re- recital and when that recital would go on Swami would usually get up from his chair which would be in the Ganesh portico in Prashantinilayam and walk towards the interview room and eventually come for bhajans into the bhajan hall so thus 15 minutes of musical recital be it flute or sitar the player would sit inside the bhajan hall and play and uh, and of course the music would be played on all the speakers in Prashantinilayam so swami would be standing outside uh, typically Uh, during that time interacting with students and swami asked that particular student if he was ready to give a speech and he was very scared and he said no swami i am not prepared so the music at that point began to play and swami asked where is this music coming from so the boys immediately pointed out and said swami it's coming from the speakers swami said oh the music is coming from the speaker but the player is within swami said swami pund with this word within and he was indicating two things the flute recital was coming from the speaker but the one who was playing the flute was inside the bhajan hall this was the fact but he used this fact to convey something very profound to the students who were not prepared to give a speech in his presence because they did not prepare for the speech so what swami was saying there was the speaker is outside the music is coming from the speaker no doubt but actually the player is within this was the message which swami drove home and this is one experience which i cherish the most it was the year april 2005 in fact it was 7th of april 2005 that year swami did not go to the brindavan ashram after the shivaratri celebrations like he would usually do so he extended his stay in prashantinilayam and we also were staying here in prashantinilayam the university closes on the 31st of march so after which some of us decided to stay back because swami was here and uh, we would attend darshan sessions every day and as those of you who have visited prashantinilayam know very well the temperatures during the months of march april may in prashantinilayam is scorching in the sense it's almost impossible to stay outside for too long and swami would walk bare feet on that mar- marble floor in prashantinilayam in that kind of a heat and every day he would come give darshans you know take the letters without a single sign of complaint on his face you know that was how beautiful and compassionate the lord was but we felt since swami is coming every day and sitting in the heat for hours together why don't we entertain him so we decided to put up a quiz program so we divided ourselves those of us who were here into four teams satya dharma shanti and prema and we had prepared an elaborate quiz program on ramayana mahabharata 
Bhagavatam and Swami's life story. Sai Bhagavatam. So on these four topics we had prepared an elaborate quiz program and all of us were enthusiastic to entertain Swami because in this hot sun he is sitting every day outside for our sake. So we made a card as usual. Uh, the students usually make a card to be presented to Bhagwan, and uh, they had written there seeking Swami's blessings for this quiz program. We have divided ourselves into four teams, Satya Dharma, Shanti, Prema and these are the topics and all that were there in the card. So they were sitting ready with the card. That morning in fact Swami had sent a message through our acting warden that the quiz program is on. That is you can have the quiz program. So enthusiastically sir came and told us so we were all geared up for the quiz program. And evening Swami came for darshan and he went and sat on his beautiful chair uh, in front of Ganesha in the Ganesh portico and he gestured for the card to be brought to him. So the card was taken to Swami and they showed the card to Bhagavan. Swami read the contents of the card in detail. He saw all the aspects of the quiz program, everything, gave it back, blessed the two boys who brought the card and sent them back. He then turned towards the student who used to move Swami's chair and he told something to him. He gave him some instructions. And that student immediately rushed uh, to the veranda of Prashantinilyam and called a particular elder to Swami's presence. Swami then gestured that a mic and a podium is to be brought in Swami's presence. And it was immediately done. And Swami started giving instructions to this elderly devotee what he should be speaking. And the elderly devotee being a very scholarly speaker gave an excellent erudite uh, you know, a wonderful speech which was filled with deep messages from the Vedas and the Upanishads uh, which really thrilled the audience. And after his uh, erudite scholarly speech, Swami turned towards the boys and said, Pillalu evarena matlar tara. Boys, will any of you speak? So all of us were dumbfounded because we had come prepared for a quiz program and none of us were, had prepared for a speech. And that was the year when Swami had asked for back-to-back -back programs even during the month of March amidst the final examination of the university. So you can imagine the kind of effort that went through and all our stock was exhausted. In the sense, all that we could speak about was already spoken about. So, and Swami does not expect you to repeat anything. So you have to be fresh, you have to be new. And Swami is asking us all of a sudden and we are prepared there for a quiz program. And Swami said, Will any of the students speak? And again there was a deep silence. Nobody endeavored to, you know, even get up or, you know, take courage. At that time, Swami looked at me eye to eye and gestured, come. It was not a physical gesture. It was just a eye to eye gesture. He just looked at me straight into my eyes and said, come. It was just an eye to eye gesture. I was so scared at that point of time that I looked to my left and to my right and decided it must be somebody else Swami was looking at, not me and I looked down. Then Swami called the warden, the acting warden at that point of time and then said, Pillar Lever Lera, there are no boys who can speak. So warden was also petrified why nobody is getting up and he did not expect a speech so he did not train the boys for that. So he was looking in a very pleading manner at the uh, boy, at the student saying, somebody just get up, you know, and volunteer yourself for a speech. And at that point of time, one of our brothers got up. Swami looked at him and gestured, Nubu Kadu, not you, Chala uh, Matlada. This, this time you got many chances to speak, so not you. So he sat down. No, the only person who took courage to get up, Swami told him to sit down and not speak. So again he looked at me eye to eye and he said, come. He gestured, come. And this time I felt, whatever happens, I'll just get up and go. Who cares? At best, it might be an absolute flop show, as we call it in our hostel language. But how does it matter? The Lord of the Universe is calling and it's our duty to get up and go. So immediately I got up and went up to him and prayed to Bhagwan. And Swami was, you know, looking at his letters or something as though he has not called me. He was the one who looked at me eye to eye and gestured, come. But when I went to him, very mischievously he was looking at letters as though he had not called. And he looked at me and said, oh, you have come. 
uh, what are you going to do? You know, that kind of gesture he gave. And uh, I just told uh, Swami in Tamil, Swami, I don't know Swami, I don't know I said, I don't know anything, Swami, you only have to speak. Swami then said in English, a beautiful sentence in English, grammatically it might be challenging at first, but he said, are you talking? Usually Swami would say, Matlar Dava in Telugu, or in Hindi, Baat Karta Hai, or in English, will you give a speech? These are the traditional or standard ways in which Swami would ask the student to speak. But in this case, Swami asked me, are you talking? I did not realize what that meant. So I spontaneously answered in Tamil, Swami, I don't know anything, Swami, you only have to speak. Then he told in Telugu, go and tell something, you know. So I just took Namaskar and went and stood at the podium. Thoughts began to flow incessantly and words in harmony with it. And it was such a flow that it was not even in my control. It was just coming, thoughts were coming and words were flowing on its own. And it went on, this whole wonderful experience went on for 13 long minutes. For those of us who have given talks and who have given unprepared talks, we know how every second counts. You know, every minute looks like an hour, every second like many minutes. You know, so it is really uh, a very challenging experience for somebody who is unprepared to go and give a talk. And in this case, thoughts began to flow and words in harmony for 13 long minutes on its own. And at the end of it was an absolutely beautiful big full stop. In the sense, the mind went completely blank. And it was then that I began to panic. I could feel that sensation which you feel here. When you, when, when you forget something in front of a large audience. So it started creeping up here. But moment it could take over my entire personality, Swami turned towards me and said, Chalu, Chalu, which means enough, enough. That is when it struck me that all these 13 minutes, it was not this fellow who was speaking, but it was he who was speaking. Since he decided to stop, there are no thoughts in the mind or it went blank rather. And that is why nothing was coming out. And exactly at that point of time, Swami turned and said, Chalo, Chalo, enough, enough. So I immediately and very conveniently concluded the talk and went up to him. When I went up to him, Bhagavan said, he just waved, his, Bhagavan waved his hand and he materialized a ring. And he asked me, what is this? I said, Swami, it's a ring. Swami smiled and said, of course it's a ring. What else it is? So I looked carefully at, at it and said, Swami, uh, it's a snake. So Swami laughed and said, Kadu Kadu Bangaru, not really so uh, dear one. Uh, he said, Salokyam Sarupyam Samipyam Sayujyam. He used these four Sanskrit words and said, Salokyam Sarupyam Samipyam Sayujyam. And I had no idea what this meant. So I just showed my left hand to Swami so he could put the ring. Uh, but unfortunately the ring would not fit. It would go only till here. And so, so Swami saw that it was not fitting. So he removed and he gave it in my hand. So I was holding it in my hand all the while. And then Swami said, Tell me what I told you. I said, Swami, I don't know Swami. What, what are those four words? I have never heard. Then Swami very compassionately said, I will say, you repeat after me. Uh, and then he said, Salokyam, Salokyam, Sarupyam, Sarupyam, Samipyam, Samipyam, Sayujyam, Sayujyam. These are the four words he said. And then he looked at the hand. And uh, seeing that Swami wanted to see what was inside the hand, I opened the palm. And there was this ring which was placed by Swami. Swami picked up the ring and very comfortably he slid it into the little finger of my right hand. And it was a perfect fit as usual. The mistake which I had done was, I did not know where it was meant for, so I showed my left hand. Because already there was a ring on the right hand. But Swami had intended that it should go into the little finger of the right hand. And hence he put it there and it was perfect fit. And then there were these four S's in the ring, which Swami pointed out and said, 
Salokyam, Sarupyam, Samipyam, Sayujyam. The meaning of this is very powerful and significant to us even to this day. Salokyam means Sa represents divinity. Lokyam means to live in the divine abode of the Lord. It is considered the first level of mukti. These are the four types of mukti. First level is Salokyam which means to be in the kingdom of God or the divine abode of God. That itself is one level of mukti called Salokya mukti. Sarupyam means, Sa again means divine, Rupam means form, to attain the form of the divine. That is what it means. Swami gives the example of Bharata uh, for this particular uh, level of mukti and says how Bharata lived for 14 years in the physical absence of Rama and after that even the mothers were not able to distinguish who was Rama and who was Bharata because of Bharata's incessant contemplation on, on Rama he started looking like Rama and they could not distinguish between the two and that is the meaning of Sarupyam Samipyam means Sa again is div divine Sam Samip means to be in close proximity Samipyam means to be in divine proximity of the Lord and to get a chance to serve Him directly as His instrument Sa Yujyam, the final level of Mukti means to become one with the Lord. There is no separation of you and me, the devotee and the Lord. Sa Yujyam is to become one with the Lord. Swami gave this ring and gave this message on the 7th of April 2005. I would like to fast forward to 24th of April 2011 when Bhagwan decided to take Mahasamadhi and his Sannidhi was built on 27th of April 2011. Somebody had told on that day that it is mandatory for some relatives of, of you know, somebody who has, whose Sannidhi has been uh, made to be seated in the Sannidhi's place for, the, for that night. So some of us, I remember seven of us were there who decided to stay back in Mandir even on the 27th. So after the Sannidhi was made and everybody had gone back, that night we spent the whole of the night in the ashram in Prashantinilayam right behind Swami Sanidhi itself on the 27th of April. When I was seated against the wall of the Prashantinilayam Mandir and contemplating on Swami, I asked him this question, Now what Swami? What now? And believe it or not, a very strong inner voice told me, It is time for Sarupyam. And I did not understand for a moment what this means. Again I paid attention. It said it is time for Sarupyam. If Swami would not have given me this ring and told me these four words Salokyam, Sarupyam, Samipyam, Sayujyam in 2005 there is no way that I would have understood. I would have just thought it is some, some noise coming from somewhere or I would have ignored it completely. But when this voice, my inner voice said it is time for Sarupyam. It became very clear. And the way the master plays his stroke is quite unique and extraordinary. That year in 2005, in the month of February, we had put up a drama. The drama's title was Tyage Naike Amritatva Manashu. We had shown three episodes, one of Karna, one of the Indian freedom struggle and another one was the scene of Bharata and Rama. The scene was Rama and Bharata, you know, were separated uh, for the period of 14 years and during which time Bharata left all the comforts and luxuries of the kingdom and began to live just like Rama. Whatever he would do, he would wait against the benchmark of what Rama would do and what would please him. And every single moment he spent in incessant contemplation on Sri Rama. And that is how he attained Sarupyam or the similar form as Sri Rama himself. And after 14 years when Rama returns, uh, Bharata and Rama hug each other and when they go to Ayodhya, the three mothers are unable to recognize who is Rama and who is Bharata. So Bharata gestures towards Rama and says, he is Rama and everybody garlands Sri Rama. This is the exact scene that was portrayed in that drama Thyage Naike Amritatva Manashu. At the end of the drama, when Swami came for the final formation, one actor who played the role of Krishna from some other scene and 
myself being Bharata, we got the chance to hold Bhagwan's hand and bring him down for the final formation to the third block. And after all the actors had taken photograph with Swami, we moved back for our sets and costume brothers to come friend for their photograph with Bhagwan. So I slowly moved to a place where the doctors used to sit on the right side of the Prashanti Mandir, uh, the VIP portico which we used to call. Uh, doctors were seated there. The railing was there, so we could go up to the third step of the railing and sit there. Uh, so that when Swami goes back to the interview room, we can have one more close darshan of Bhagwan. So I went there and sat there. Apparently when Swami was walking all through, Swami kept asking everybody something which I was not aware of because I was seated near the doctors. But when Swami came up onto the Ganesh portico, He looked at me and said, Are you Bharata? I said, Yes Swami. And Swami said, Chala Santosham. Very happy. And Swami just walked. It was a blissful experience at, for that moment, but I did not realize what all that meant. In February, I got to play the role of Bharata in a scene where Bharata is separated physically from Rama for 14 long years. And in that period, what he had to do was to follow the instructions of Rama implicitly and to live just like how Rama did. And then comes the month of April 2005 where Bhagwan out of the blue materializes this ring and it was a great opportunity since I was not prepared to give a talk at all and he pulled me out of the blue and taught me this lesson that who is the real doer and who is just an instrument, who is the speaker and who is actually the performer. That message was given and much after this in the year 2011 April 27th, Swami said, it is time for Sarupyam. It became very clear that Sarupyam indicated that all of us have to lead a life like that of Bharata in the physical invisibility of Sri Rama or Satya Sai Rama. Why this is very clear is because the usual sequence of Salokyam, Sarupyam, Samipyam, Sayujyam is not but the usual sequence given is Salokyam, Samipyam, Sarupyam and Sayujyam. That is first comes Salokyam, next comes Samipyam, close proximity to the Lord to serve Him directly. Next comes Sarupyam and finally comes Sayujyam. It is only in the case of Bharata where this order was reversed. Because Bharata lived in the kingdom of God, he lived with Rama in Ayodhya. So he had Salokyam. But he did not have Samipyam as much as he would have wanted because his whole childhood went in studying and serving the Guru which was Sage Vashishta. And by the time they came back, uh, already Sage Vishwamitra had come and taken away Rama and Lakshmana. And uh, once Rama and Lakshmana left, they had eventually gone to Mithila and uh, Rama broke the uh, bow of Lord Shiva and all the four princes got married. And after the marriage, when they went back to Ayodhya, Bharata and Shatrugna eventually went to their uncle's place, that is his maternal grandfather's place, that is the Kaikeya Rajya or Kashmir, the current day Kashmir. So he spent a substantial portion of his time there and during which time Rama was sent into exile. So Bharata actually did not get the chance of Samipyam or close service to Rama as much as he would have wanted. Though he lived in the same uh, the same atmosphere, in the same kingdom as Rama in Ayodhya, Salokyam was granted to him. But it was only after Sarupyam, that is he had to spend 14 long years in physical separation of Rama, during which time Swami says he did Nirguna Pasaka, that is he had no physical form of Rama, he took his Padukas as his reference and the Paduka Swami says is the teachings of the Sadguru, which is none other than Sri Rama. So Bharatna took the teachings of the Sadguru as the pinnacle or his goal to be achieved and he led his entire life with the reference of the Sadguru's teachings for those 14 long years and his incessant contemplation on the Sadguru, that is Sri Rama, led to him attaining Sarupyam. Once he attained Sarupyam, and Rama returned to Ayodhya, Rama was coronated and Bharata became the Yuvaraja or the prince, the crown prince. And because he was the crown prince and Rama the emperor, 
he was all the time beside Rama, serving Rama incessantly. That is, Samipyam was granted to Bharata after Sarupyam. And finally, of course, as we all know, when Rama decided to walk into Sarayu, all the brothers eventually merged into the one divine and there was no separation between them. This whole master plan of making us do the drama of Chyage Naike Amritattva Manashu, where he made this instrument play the role of Bharata, in the month of April, he, he makes this instrument understand that you are just an instrument and your duty is to simply allow the divinity to flow through you and then he gives the ring and says Salokyam Sarupyam Samipyam Sayujyam where he swaps the order of Sarupyam and Samipyam and then finally on the Maha Samadhi or the Sannidhi day on 27th April when the Sannidhi was actually prepared on in 2011 Swami gives this divine insight in the form of the inner voice and he says it is time for Sarupyam in the sense you have lived with me in the kingdom of God in my kingdom now it is time for you to live my teachings let your life become my message that is the example set by Bharata that is your goal that you have to follow now in your life In the silence of the night, when the stars are shining bright, cool rays of the moon reflected on the still sea. In the silence of the night, when the stars are shining bright, cool rays of the moon reflected on the still sea. We felt your love in our heart. 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 This is the day which marks the victory of good over evil with the destruction of Narakasura. This is the day dedicated to man's eternal quest for the primordial light. This is the day when Lord Krishna humbled the pride of Indra by lifting Govardhanagiri. This is the day when Lord Sri Rama returned to his beloved ones in Ayodhya Nagari. Today, we are blessed to offer our obeisance to our beloved Sai Rama, who has come to celebrate with us the festival of life. Our love today is carved on this canvas of night, the thousand sparkling diamonds embedded in the wheel of darkness. The darkness cannot hide it, nor the clouds override it. As the students light the flower pots, their fiery spirits are lit in thousand clinkers of love. The earth seems to boast of million stars in her laps, twinkling in the prodigious symphony of illumination. चांद नजर नहीं आता है आज अब चांद बिचारा क्या करे अब चांद बिचारा क्या करे जब आफताब जमी में है सुबह का इंतजार कौन करे जब शाम इतनी रंगीन है Like a sudden wonder they all surge upwards as if 
to grasp the eternity in a moment's class are they the warriors of our hearts charging towards heaven or are they luminous whispers to space saying the lord is with us the lord is with us any festival is incomplete without a dance for dance is an expression of ecstasy and freedom that the soul experiences now we have the students of sri satya sai higher secondary school offering their love to bhagwan in the form of a dance All the earthen lamps are flame, and fireworks are glow. Whizzing and exploding across the autumn sky, with Sai, our lives ride joyously on the crest of the waves of light, the picture of perfection, the joy unalloyed. Behold the wonder in the nocturnal rainbow, as today we have coloured the horizon with brush of love. spreading your glory on the vast november sky as if all our passions are weaved in fire in evanescent hues of gold and silver red and blue from impulsive blue to right as pink from subtle green to serene silver as the freezes in splendor for the moment of eternity we the students of sri satya sai educational institutions are over elated in this historic evening for the one who bestows brilliance to light itself for the one who is exalted in gayatri mantra for dispelling the inner darkness of ignorance for the one who is the source of all the wealth and prosperity as adi lakshmi has come right amidst us how fortunate we are bhagwan for this day gains its significance because of you Bhagwan your very presence itself is greatest of celebrations and highest form of fulfillment for us even as we saw the festive fireworks explode in all its glory in this November sky we pray to you bhagwan to bestow upon us the inner strength to conquer our inner enemies and grant us the awareness of inner life our inner guide sai jyoti
भगवान श्री सत्य साई बाबा जी की 